Hey, good morning, everybody. John here from Avic Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. So, while Games Workshop continues to wage its war on the fan base, and yes, they they are. Um, other companies are surprising us on a regular basis, like Atomic Mass Games and their really hot, awesome game, Marvel Crisis Protocol. And usually what happens with Atomic Mass Games is they'll go through this process of like, hey, here's a new miniature. We're showing you how to paint it. Um, here's a sneak peek on some future miniatures that are going to be coming out. And... Then they'll have a panel to play like you're seeing on the screen right now. And then usually, usually, they will have the the actual character cards, the, the cards that you need to play the game um, that alongside the miniatures. They'll reveal usually one of those. That's usually the process they'll do over a period of several weeks with kind of throwing in, hey, here's a sneak peek of a new model. Um, but usually you can rely on painting videos and uh, panel to play, and then the character card revealed pretty much every week. Now, not all the time because I mean they there's so many only so many models they can put out, and they've got to keep that content fresh, like they did today. So while Games Workshop continues to really shoot themselves in the foot, I mean, is it, what's going on with Games Workshop right now? And I've, I. I I'm reading up on it, and I'm trying to get a, a good cohesive video going. Um, why they're, but they're kind of hurting themselves, and it's the the fan backlash is already is already happening, and it's going to. I don't think it's going to go away because Twitter, and Instagram, and Facebook, Games Workshop's going to be in a bit of trouble. But we're not here to talk about that. We're going to talk about Atomic Mass Games. So. As I said, usually we get a panel to play, and this week we got two panels to play. Uh, we've got we got uh, Blade, and now we got Ancient One, and we also got a character card this week, uh, Moon Knight. I think we reported on this yesterday, but today we not only get a second panel to play, but we get a second card with the Ancient One. So we're not actually going to read this panel to play, uh, though I did notice something here. I'm not sure which um, uh, mystic monk they're talking about here. They said uh, they're referring to the ancient one being around since the 1200s. In I don't want to say in reality, but in the present, the, the main ancient one that uh, everybody's used to with the Fu Manchu long beard, the old wizened um, Tibetan guy. Uh, that's more associated with the ancient one from like, uh, God, how, who knows how long he's been around comic book wise. Uh, let's see. His first appearance was 1961 in Amazing Adventures. So he's been around that long. Now, he was born in uh, 1430 or 1430s. So he's been around since the 1400s. So I'm not sure which one they're going with here. But you know what? That doesn't do anything about gameplay. That's just a little nitpick thing. And it's... Uh, they can easily go since Marvel Crash Protocol is in its own separate universe. Like the main um, Marvel comic book universe is six one six. That's the Prime universe, I guess you can call it. MCU is its own universe. Crash Protocol, the Marvel Champions, I think it's Marvel Champions uh, card game from As or Fantasy Flight Games, I think it is. It's its own separate universe. That's how they can change things up. So. This mystic, or this uh, ancient one, 1200s, okay. I think I just talked myself into it. So anyways, uh, so we got a pretty cool miniature coming out. Definitely some feminine vibes there, but still uh, some androgynous going on there. Totally cool, because we don't need the ancient one to be a man, a woman. We just need the ancient one to be this ancient being of magic. That's <laughs> incredibly powerful so the panel to play usually just has a little bit of blurb about their abilities but this time we get to see their character cards let me see if i can get a better close-up there we go so let's do this close-up and we can kind of read along here so this is really cool and this is not going to be too much of a long video so let's let's get into this right away the ancient one so that's their 
superhero name, I guess, or superhero Marvel Universe name. And their real name is the Ancient One because nobody knows who the Ancient One is. Now, in 616, the main universe's name is like Yao. Um, but this one, eh, it's just the Ancient One. Um, so, left to right, top to bottom, let's read off the abilities. Now, I when I looked at the... Uh, Injured side or dazed side and the healthy side, which we're looking at right now, they are the same. It doesn't look like there's any changes, so we're just going to keep one up. So the ancient one, uh, six health uh, puts her, them, let's go with her. That's because it definitely looks feminine. And when we just had, I think it was Twil Tilda Swinton as the ancient one in Doctor Strange and um, Avengers uh, Endgame. Let's just go with that. So six health, so that's a total of 12. Pretty nice, I'm going to say. Medium movement, okay. That's not too bad. That's kind of standard. Uh, we got height or uh, size two, standard human size. Four, only a four threat. A little surprising. Because uh, I think regular Doctor Strange is a threat five. So that's kind of interesting that this is a threat four. So we'll see, we'll see why though. Uh, only a two physical defense that's a that's below average three energy uh, resistance okay that's uh, average and then five mystic defense that's not too shabby i'm not sure what dr strange is i don't have the card handy but i imagine dr strange is close to that if not um, right on the nose so we have a variety of attacks we have shards of seraphim uh, these next three attacks are all mystic attacks so shards of the seraphim Range two, so it's kind of, I think, more of a close combat attack with her little wispy knuckle magic sparkly thingies. So five dice and zero power. After the attack is resolved, it's pretty much standard. You get power equal to the actual damage you dealt. For those of you not familiar, if you, let's say you did five damage, but the character only had three health left, you technically are only going to cause three um, dam uh, three damage, so you're only going to get three power, just as a heads up. Now, if you happen to roll a wild symbol during this attack, you can, so during those five dice, which that's a pretty good chance you're going to get a wild symbol, you can change one of the character, one of the defending characters, uh, critical success, their wild symbol, or the defense uh, symbol for their dice to a blank. And uh, that this is the pierce ability. That's good because that helps lower their defenses and increases your opportunity to cause damage. So really cool. That's a, that's a nice, easy, cheap ability. And the fact that you're going to be able to generate a bunch of power from this, that's cool. Uh, and sh right now, the Ancient One does not look like a power hog. So next up, we have Fangs of Farala. Farala la 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 la. Range three. Four dice uh, for attack dice. That's not a lot, but zero power. Now, here's the cool thing. So earlier, or the, the shards of the Seraphim, you're going to get power for all the damage you dealt. This one, no matter what damage is dealt, after you're done doing the attack, you gain one power. So she's going to be generating, as long as you're popping off Fangs of Farah, la 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 la, once a turn, you're going to be gaining at least that power plus the power from... Um, your normal power phase. Also, if you deal damage with this attack, it you're going to get poison. So uh, that's not too bad. Uh, I don't foresee this attack doing a whole lot. This is, looks to me more like you you need you need a point of power to pop off another ability. Let's go and do Fangs of Far la 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 and get that point of power, and then boom, I can go to the next one, Astral Strike. Astral Strike is range two, eight dice. It's going to cost four power, so a little costly, but the defending character does not get to add critical success results in its defense roll to its total successes and cannot add additional dice to its defense roll as a result of the critical success. If you're not familiar, if you roll a critical success, you get to immediately roll, or not immediately, but during the during the sequence, you get to roll an additional dice. Now that one doesn't uh, trigger an additional critical success or anything, but it could give you another success in your attacking or defending. And here, you get nothing. You don't get nothing for it. Not the, the normal result or the get to roll the additional dice. That's awesome. If this attack deals damage, 
after this attack is resolved, the target character gains a stagger special condition. Awesome. I mean, you're pretty much, when, when you can pop this off, you're almost guaranteeing you're going to do the damage. All right, so let's get into her abilities. We have the first, the, the only superpower, Mists of Hogoth. Place this character within range two of its current position. This uh, can only be used once per turn, and it costs two power. Uh, that's not bad. That's a nice little jaunt away. Um, that could be a nice clutch moment. That's not too bad. I like that. Uh, we have, and by clutch moment, I mean um, getting out of the way of an area of effect, uh, upcoming area of effect attack. Maybe claiming an objective. Maybe even having an, uh, one of the one of the extraction objectives and getting away, that sort of thing. So that's that ability to move like that without spending an action. Awesome. Or spending uh, without even spending an action. Goodness gracious. Without even spending an action, you can pop that off, get closer, and do two attacks. That's not too bad. Uh, we have a reactor power winds of Watum. Let's go with that. Winds of Watum. Three power. When this character is targeted by an attack, it may use the superpower. Push the attacking character toward this character short range. Okay. So bring him in a little closer. There's some nice movement abilities. I can see some combos. It'd be interesting to see what the other characters that are going to be coming out with the Ancient One are going to be like in this regard or their, their tactics cards. But She's not looking too bad. She doesn't look like a heavy damage dealer, but um, there's some tomfoolery starting to kind of develop there. She might be nice to move around the board, move people around. I, I'm liking this. She has two innate abilities. First one is Keeper of the Eye of Agamotto. So when this character is making a defense or dodge roll, it may re-roll up to two of its defenses or dodge dice. Additionally, during the power phase, this character gains one additional power. So you're gaining two power at the beginning uh, or during the power phase. Uh, the power phase is at the beginning of every game round when you reactivate all your characters. So two power plus, I mean, if you pop off fangs of uh, fa la 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 la, you're getting three power. Uh, she's, she's not even a power hog. But you know what? All these, uh, like her reactive ability and her superpower uh, ability, they, they're not actions. So you're not spending actions to do them. So this, she's going to be able to do a lot uh, based generally on just on how much power she's going to be generating. Uh, so all of her stuff is relatively cheap. I'm digging this a lot. And plus, she's got some good defenses, even though her... Um, even though her physical defense... And energy defense is average, but her physical defense is a two. But uh, with that Eye of Agamotto, your defense and dodge, uh, you can re-roll up to two of those dice. So essentially you're, in a way, just kind of adding, I think percentage-wise, it comes out to like point another, I'm not going to get into percentages, but it's basically like having an extra dice in your pool. All right, so let's get on to our martial arts. This is her last innate ability. When this character is defending against a, ooh, looks like a physical or energy attack, targeting it from within range two, this character adds blanks in its defense roll to its total successes. That's cool. I think I've, um, that there's other abilities out there, like if the attacker is not within range three, then you can't target the character. I think that's a really awesome ability. But this one is, is really nice. Um, especially when you consider her low physical, and let's just let's be honest, her, her low energy defense. Um, and with a lot of characters having range two attacks, I mean, it's kind of like the standard. Um, and if you see like her attacks, most of her attacks are um, at least range two, only one being range three. That's actually, she can get up nice, close and personal and benefit from re-rolls. And the only thing that she needs to worry about uh, failing her defense is if she rolls uh, the critical failure or if she rolls uh, one or more, I think there's two total um, uh, 
uh, hits on the die on the sides of the dice. So the fact that she can she only has to re-roll she has like thirty six percent chance of not getting what she wants on the dice, uh, roughly. And then when you take into account her uh, ability to re-roll that, I want to say you drop it down. 13 14 percent so basically one side of the dice so really she ends up only having like a 24 25 percent chance of actually failing um to get enough six uh defense uh symbols uh, within range two within range two between the i the keeper of the eye of agamotto and martial arts my math is a little off there but you get the idea within range two She's going to be very good on her defense. So not too bad overall for uh, for threat four. Not, oh my gosh, I've got to have the ancient one in my group. But we need still need to see. She's going to come in a box, I believe, with uh, Baron Carl Mordo. Nope. It's not the Baron Mordo. It's actually just Mordo. Um, and he looks more like, and I can't pronounce the dude's name, but from the uh, Doctor Strange movie. And if you watch The Old Guard with Charlize Theron, he's in that as well. And a variety of other awesome movies. Anyways, so I don't know what her interaction is going to be with other characters. There might be some nice interplay if you are running the, uh, I think they're called the Convocation, all these different mystics. And of course, any tactics cards that are already available right now or will be available later. It's something we're going to have to look into. Uh, there's a lot of options here. She's not overwhelming. But she's definitely interesting. She's, she. I think she's, I want to say she's like a support character. There's something there that I'm just not seeing right now. If you guys know what it is, um, especially you guys that play on a more regular basis, or you can see 30 moves ahead in a chess game and you know you're going to win, I would appreciate if you can put down in the comments what it is I'm missing about this character, what's going to be great about her. I, like I said, she's got some decent attacks. She's going to be generating a lot of power. She's going to be able to move people around. And I, I don't know. There's just something there. I think she's really more of a support character than um, and not even really a control or a damage character. She's just kind of an all, I think she's a well-rounded character. Um, nice, balanced character overall. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, and especially if you have an idea of any of the tactics cards that are going to be coming out alongside her and Mordo, that's going to enhance, you know, do you think that her and Mordo are going to have a couple team tactics cards where they could have some nice interplay between the, uh, between the two, because at least in the MCU, they were fast friends and, um, allies until, you know, things went sour anyways. So let me know what you guys think of this and, if anybody's got a good speculation on what's going to be happening for Mordo, man, put that down in the comments too. So uh, this weekend we're going to be playing the Mutant, I think it's Mutant Mastermind, um, Ultimate Encounter with Magneto, and then Separation Anxiety in the very near future, which is uh, we, we covered in yesterday's video. I'm trying to get some better images, but like I said, I'm trying to keep somebody safe and uh, without getting too much in trouble from uh, Atomic Mass Games. Now, they're not like Games Workshop. I don't foresee them dropping the hammer, but I don't want to get in trouble. So, you guys have yourself a wonderful weekend. We're going to try to have another video up a little later tonight on Twitch, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. That link is somewhere down below for Havoc Maker Studio. We're going to be doing our giveaway, uh, two giveaways live uh, during the channel. So, join the channel. Join tw the Twitch channel. And... If you don't mind, hit the follow button if you haven't already followed on Twitch. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get, I think it's called Prime Loot now. Uh, it's a free subscription to uh, to Twitch that you can give to uh, content creators like myself on Twitch. It doesn't cost you anything. It just lingers there um, if you never use it. And But it does benefit us. So if you don't mind hitting us up with that, joining the chat... We're going to be doing some paint videos. We've got some converted models we're going to be tinkering with tonight. And, of course, we're going to do the giveaway at some point during the show. I'm going to say probably between the 8 to 8.30 p.m. time frame. You guys have yourself a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you later.